Our first work in this unit is Nan Madal, the first example of Pacific architecture. For form, you'll need to remember that the stone used was basalt, which breaks into nice, neat, column-like structures and was easy to move. For function, think of our big idea of power of the patron, a gathering place for the elite of the area. For content, you do have some graves and some sacred space inside, but also rooms for living and everyday life. And for context, of course, it's Pacific, but make sure that you remember that it's compared to Venice because it has lots of nice, neat waterways for traveling. Next are the Moai, or Easter Island heads. For form, you'll need to remember that these are exclusively male figures and can be anywhere from 5 to 15 feet tall. Their function is important as ancestor worship and protection. You can put that under ritualistic or religious. They face inward over the island to watch over all of the villages as chiefs or gods, chiefs that have become gods after death. For context, you will need to know that Easter Island is a very isolated area off the coast of Chile. And reviewing the Easter Island video that I've posted can be very helpful to understand why the mystery of Easter Island is so interesting and so important to us today. Also remember that these are geometric figures and have that very calm, statuesque look that is associated with power and protection. Next we have the Ahuula, or Feather Cape, a really interesting artwork that comes from Hawaii. For form, you'll need to know about the feathers and the fiber from which this is woven. And remember that these feathers are taken from teeny tiny birds that are not killed, but that are captured with a few feathers plucked from each bird. Function, again, is power and protection. So remember that that cape and wearing the cape transfers the mana from the family or the tribe onto the warrior or the chief or leader who is wearing it. For content, you can put that the family patterns on the cape are passed down and are traditionally Hawaiian. Each family or tribe would have a different pattern. For context, make sure you put something about mana and that personal power that transfers into the wearer during battle. Next we have the staff god so-called because its form is a very long, skinny staff. That staff is wrapped up in tapa with precious stones hidden inside. For function, it was meant to be worshipped. It is the representation of a god. And for content, you can put that the stones inside are the soul of the god wrapped in that tapa by the community for safety. Also, you're going to have to remember that this is from Fiji and that when colonialism was happening there, the missionaries came and told the natives that their staff gods were blasphemous or evil and needed to be destroyed or burnt, which is why we don't have any good examples or very few good examples of the work today. Here we have the female deity, or goddess. She is made from carved and oiled wood in a stylized and anthropomorphic female form. Remember, anthropomorphic means it has human features, but is not actually human. For function, you can put that it was made to be worshiped, especially during a harvest ritual. For content, you can add those geometric shapes, very angular, elongated torso, 
And for context, you can put Micronesia, or if you want to be more specific, Caroline Island. And here's the book mask, which you are responsible for teaching each other this unit. For form, you can put natural materials, turtle shell, plant fiber, raffia, wood. And for function, be sure to put something about how this was meant to be worn and danced during an initiation ritual for men, a boy transitioning into a man with the help of the spirit that was represented or possibly lived in the mask. It was not meant to be displayed. It was meant to be an interactive experience. For content you can put, it does have a human face and also a bird on top of its head. That is a frigate bird, which is consistently seen across the Pacific because frigate birds can travel a very long way across the water and they're meant to be a very powerful animal representing transferring that power to humans. For context, this is from the Torres Strait, and you can just put that uh, in association with the Pacific. You could also write about the initiation ritual under context here. This is called the tapa, or also hayapo. For form, this is woven plant fibers uh, from palm trees or reeds, and it contains those geometric patterns that are so prominent in Pacific cultures, especially seen from the Lapita fragments. For function, this is ritualistic, religious, and also practical. We see Pacific Islanders wearing the tapa for special occasions, but we also see that the staff god was wrapped in this cloth as a symbol of protection by the community. The traditional patterns are chosen from a long history of creating these, and it was made by the women of the community, all the women, not just one, it's a communal effort. This is found all over Polynesia, so for your context, make sure that you write uh, just Polynesia women's art uh, and, you know, that communal group effort. And, of course, don't forget, Tamati Wakanene, a portrait by Gottfried Lindauer. For form, you can put oil on canvas, or you can just put a painting. For function, this was meant to embody the spirit of Tamati Wakanene. It also shows tradition and his power and protection as chief. For content, put that he has that powerful pose and the tokens of his power as chief, the staff, the stone, his tattoos, which are traditional, the cloak, which is an ahuula, and also that calm expression on his face. Tamati Wakanene was a man of great mana, or personal power which he used to protect his people. This was made for an external audience, which means that it was not actually made for the Pacific Islanders, but was meant for a European viewing of Pacific culture, which is why the artist is actually German, uh, Gottfried Lindauer. And this is your navigation chart, an interesting work because it does not look anything like a map, but it is. The sticks are arranged in patterns and it is portable, but it was meant to be destroyed before the people would actually go on the journey. So remember that the patterns are showing ocean currents and tides as a way of wayfinding as uh, exemplified in the movie Moana and it is a practical, non-religious use. The context here is that this is from the Marshall Islands and that the people would need these in order to be able to travel between islands, say if they wanted to go to Nanmadal or even visit a family that was on the next island over. 
was really important to their lives, which is why it's included in the 250. And here's your other peer teach, the Malagan mask and display. These were made from natural materials, very similar to the book mask, and were meant to be worn and danced. But unlike the book mask, this one is meant for a funerary ritual or ceremony. And these were meant to be burned after one use because they represent the spirit of the person or the ancestor who has died being released into the spirit world. These do have anthropomorphic forms with birds, fish, and animals, and they are uh, decorated with the tattoo-like lines. Remember those Lapita fragments, dots and dashes, also found on the tapa. Those can be found on the face and as decorations. And these are found in Papua New Guinea. Uh, and yeah, that's all you need to know for this one. Remember that they're supposed to be for funer funerals. It's a funerary function. And of course, last but not least, the longest work, the presentation of Fijian mats and tapa cloths to Queen Elizabeth II. This is a photograph of the ceremony, so you can put that for form. But what's really important here is what's happening in the photograph. So for function, you're going to put that they're going to honor the queen and that this is about tradition and change, although it is also about power. This is a traditional ceremony, but we're in incorporating change because they're honoring the Queen of England instead of one of their own chieftains or their own queens. So this is how we're seeing that change to go together with tradition. Um, for content, you can put it's a procession of important and traditional gifts, mainly tapa, of course, by the women. And the women are giving the gifts because the women have created the gifts, right? For context, all of that can also go under context. And again, we're seeing this overlap. Um, but you can put that this occurred in Fiji, obviously, and was part of colonialism, which we're seeing as a recurring trend uh, throughout this unit. And that's all, folks. Good luck studying for your test.